Outside. 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 Do you want to say outside? Yeah. Can you say outside? No. Outside. What would you say if you were on television? Do you like coffee or tea? Uh, I am a wash already, so All no, right. neither. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. <laughs> hello. Would Alan, you like to? Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Are you sure? Yes. All right. What is your name? Alan. Alan. Hi, Alan. I'm uh, Peter. Pleased to meet you, Peter. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Thanks. It's hi. Nice. hi. <laughs> Rosie, would you like something? Coffee yes, or please. tea? Alright, I think one of them is... I'm not sure, is that milk? Yeah, that's milk. So that's, this is tea, this is coffee. Um, you know what? I'll try the tea for once with milk. Okay. It's just something I wanted to try, actually. Just trying to blend in. You think, like, people like me should try this and do it as a, a proper Englishman, or you think... As a Belgian, you show me how you drink. Well, the thing is that everyone does it in their own way, even in yeah. England. Some people will, will try and tell you that there is a proper way, you know. Yeah. But everyone pleases themselves. Yeah. Do you know why they pour milk in tea? Do you know why? why do they pour milk in yeah. tea? I don't know. My, you don't my, know where it comes my from? My doctor, who came from India and was a Hindu, couldn't understand why English people drank milk at all. Really? It was a mystery to him. Yeah. I don't know what the reason was, but uh, he, he put all kinds of Qatar down to, <laughs> down to milk. <laughs> I can't imagine but, but why. But Indians, do, do they use milk, don't they? They drink milk. I presume so. I've no yeah, idea, I think so, yeah. yeah. I was in India. No, I don't, I don't think it was the fact that he was from India. It was the fact that he was a doctor. Yeah. But, um, uh, he didn't understand, he yeah, understand why, why, yeah. why people like milk. Yeah. yeah, some people. I think say I find it quite comforting. Milk, you know, like if you have a milky drink, or uh, I don't know if it's um, reminding me of, of like my my babyhood, you know, <laughs> when mil mil milk was the ultimate comfort to us all, wasn't it? Yeah, milk from the breast. Do you know if you were breastfeeded or? I think I was probably breastfed. Yeah, initially. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm Karen Gage. I'm oh, Cowan yeah. Gage, definitely. War, war baby, Cowan Gage. What does, what does that mean, Cowan Gage? <laughs> it was, that was dried milk. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, powdered milk, food. yeah. Powdered milk, yes. Yeah. Baby food, yes. When so were you born? 1940. All right, do you, remember anything, uh, do you remember anything of that, of the, of the war as a child? Well, I claim I remember the searchlights. I certainly remember mm. the planes coming back in convoy after the war. Yeah. Uh, definitely, yeah. Uh, you you said the, you claim... The noise, the noise, yeah. you see, of the, the drone of the, pl of the yeah. planes in convoy, or well, so, yeah, squadrons coming back of convoy. Must be a better word. Yeah, no, no. Uh, Squadron. Yeah, Squadrons. Squadrons, yeah, yeah, yeah there's other. like yeah. a... Like um, a skein of geese. Four kind of, of, yeah. Being a bird watcher. Yes. <laughs> Do you, do you, you said you claim to remember? Is that, uh, well, that you're not 100% sure? I it can't could also remember where I was yesterday now, so I claim to remember <laughs> <laughs> anything. Uh, the older you get, the more fuzzy the... Uh, Is it true? <laughs> oh, the, okay. Yeah. So you can remember childhood things yeah. far more clearly, but you don't know how much of that is an emotional yeah. reflex. Does, does uh, like, pictures help? Um, Yes, any, anything can spark a, a memory of, mm. yes. When, when Tom asked me before about any dreams, and then you get this recurrent thing uh, back to when I was 17. Yeah. And a sort of guilt complex about one dream and an absolute euphoria about another one. And it, it just became interesting. But it was sparked off by a question by Tom. Yeah. So you can see something, um, a painting, and the Tate. I said, I'm sure I've seen this before, a sort of sense of deja vu, didn't you? Yeah. You get that. Uh, and I think, wow. And sometimes it's comforting and sometimes it's unnerving. Yeah, yeah I, and, and the older you get, the more you have this, right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm 39 and 
I was two weeks ago, I was on, in a festival and I was sure I was never uh, at that place before. But then I entered um, the festival and there was this like church, kind of like, a, um, I don't know the word in English, but it's an outside ch church, so there's no, it's not an inside. And then I said, I know this place, I know this place. And a couple of days later, I realized uh, when I was a really young child, I was there. So, I mean, I'm 39 and it already happens, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean there are spooky moments. You can be, you can come across a word, especially when you're younger, mm -hmm. that you've never heard before, an unusual word, and then the next day on the radio, there's a play, and suddenly that word occurs. I think, wow, well, this is more than coincidence. You know, yeah. Sort of, um, and what was the word I was thinking of the other day? Sort of exponential. Is that the right word? So sort of things gallop. Yes. 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 And I discovered that when I was thinking of global warming. And now everybody's talking about it, but it's related to inflation or, you know, the state of the world we're in now, the mess we're in now financially. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this sort of, it's getting out of control. But to me, it's the melting of the ice sheet on the North Pole. Mm -hmm. And it's exponential. Do you, do you sometimes also have the feeling that I hear it sometimes from um, older people like it's it's all coming back. This is like it's not something new is happening. It's Everything is cyclic. Yes, it is definitely as far mm. as I'm concerned. Anyway, yeah. do, you, do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like cameras? And, uh, no, please. I think you should only look forward anyway. One shouldn't look backward in life. Yeah. You should, you've got to go forward, haven't you? You're the future. I mean, we, we've lived ours and we relay, we rely or relay what we did, but, you know, it's not guidance really, because sometimes your memory plays trick on one. Please, could you move across to that way? Please, I come to listen, not to be a, a member of. If that's okay, <laughs> no, thank no, you. No, no, Sorry. That's definitely okay. No, that's um, definitely okay. So yeah, I do think you know we we've got to move forward. And it's, you know, sometimes yeah. it's reassuring to look back because you remember the good points. Yeah. Well, mostly you remember the good points, but the, you know this is the future, isn't it? Tom, you you've been uh, working on different topics. Is this something that also uh, is on your mind when you're working, uh, like uh, how to remember? Because um, you've been working together. Uh, on dreams and yeah. and how to put them in words. I guess is is that. Yeah, working together, I'm a victim. <laughs> <laughs> he suddenly said, Well, I, I have to go because I had this idea about filming people recalling their dreams. I have to approach people and mm. um, ask them to recall things, you know. So um, it's all about recollection, you know. Um, can you ask me that again? Yes, it's something that's also on your mind that, um, like the past, um, this is about dreams, but I, I can imagine for myself that dreams all, uh, relates to the past, to what happened to you. Sometimes it's just whatever kind of dream, but sometimes you have dreams that come back. You, I don't know if you ever had that kind yeah. of dreams that... Okay, well, um, I used to live in a, in a house that I didn't like, and... Um, I was trying for a few years to organize myself to move out from this house and um, sometimes I dream that I'm back in this house mm -hmm. that I didn't like living in and it's like, oh my God, I've ended up back there, you know, I thought I'd escaped from that house and now I'm somehow, I'm in there or it's sometimes it's like um, I need to be there because I need to just get something that I might have left there, you know, yep. and I really didn't want to have to go back there, you know, so, yeah, past anxieties can um, can definitely stay with you and you revisit them in dreams, you know, yep. they're just maybe there in the background in, in your waking life. Um, perhaps, hi, welcome. Yeah. Um, I have a coffee left, if you want, you can have a coffee. Uh, if you, thanks so much. Yeah, there's uh, also some milk and some sugar. Thanks so much. Uh, this is the milk. <coughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Hi. It's nice. a good uh, first time I got an opportunity of just coming over here. Yeah. It's good to learn more about uh, 
different cultures, different societies, and different opinions. Yeah. And of course, above all is experience, you know, and how people experience their life. And uh, you have, uh, I think you've chosen the topic of dreams or something like that? Well, or? We started off with dreams today, yeah. Ah. It's not like we, uh, we decide a topic, it's uh, what comes to us. Ah. That kind of, yeah. But you know, uh, as far as, uh, of course, everybody has its own experience regarding and uh, uh, dreaming something, you know, when you've been happy or something, it, uh, it differs uh, from situation to situation. And even there is also medically when you have eaten too much then you have a bad dreams also yes that is true <laughs> that is also there so it is, it is i think nothing to worry about it and people start thinking that maybe something will going to happen with him but uh, i personally believe that uh, we in such like uh, situation particularly where we get opportunity of having a get together sitting different people's we must share the concept of how to bring peace in the society, how to love each other, how to respect each other, how to make this world a better place to live, you know? Yeah. Instead of just think, I mean, we must, this is what my idea and my opinion is. And when I was uh, first in the morning I came here, I thought uh, we must, I will I like to share the peaceful things, the concept which uh, is very important and of course it is the need of the time how to live in the societies how to be more friendly more loving with each other and because we have the same blood the colors are different and uh, different brought ups different societies and uh, why people uh, hate each other and why they, they don't like each other I mean, this is the question. Why yes. they, they feel that someone is superior and someone is inferior like this, you know? And this type of topics must be introduced and must be shared everywhere so that we can um, understand each other's concept, each other's behavior, attitude in more positive manner, you know? There are a number of positive things in the societies, different society, societies, but it uh, sometimes uh, maybe um, the circumstances make somebody bad or something act in a illegal or bad manner, you know. Otherwise, uh, human beings is the best creation of the Creator. Yeah. Best creation. Okay. You, know. um, you live in Liverpool? Yeah, I live in Liverpool. You've been living here for a long time? You no, were... I, 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 I came in the year 2010, mm -hmm. October, and uh, this year it will be a two year. And, um, and where do you come from? I've come from Pakistan. From Pakistan. And uh, basically, I'm a lawyer. And uh, of course, things not good over there. And uh, ultimately, I have no other option but to leave the country. How, how was um, when you came here? So two years ago, did you feel like like welcome to here in in uh, Liverpool? Honestly speaking, you know, people over here are very friendly. No doubt about it have a very beautiful thoughts. But uh, what I felt is that, uh, you know, there is a concept of uh, racism, anti-social behavior, and uh, there are a number of classes used to be held on this particular, do these two topics, how to avoid all these things, you know? And uh, when I heard about it, I, I become a bit, uh, I mean, uh, amazed. Why in this beautiful society, this type of things are happening? You know, in our country also, there is, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, some fanatic thoughts, despite of the fact that uh, any religion always teaches. I, I have studied many religions. I come to the conclusion that in every religion, there is a concept of creator and the creation. And uh, definitely, when you have a true love with the creator, then you will definitely love with the creation also. You know, it is as simple as that. That's probably ah. a good essence of ah. it, 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 it. And it is lacking. Mm -hmm. That's why there is a concept of some um, anti-social behavior type of things been happening in the developed countries even. This is all because the concept of creator being gone. They become more realistic, more worldly, I mean more relying on their own powers, on their own attitudes, own behaviors own knowledge 
they don't get no, they don't try to get knowledge from the creator and um, i think this is what i have uh, understood since i came over here i have a long story why i left because leaving the hometown after a long time working over there almost 21 years and established Did you come on your own? yeah 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 you know so Left behind your family? Or? No, no, my, I, I, with my family. Yes. I came here with my family, and uh, luckily I came in this beautiful uh, country as well as in this beautiful city. A very friendly. Uh, Did you choose Liverpool? No, I, no. When I when I came here, I just uh, applied for you know asylum, and then ultimately I was got a status, and now I'm just looking to establish myself to be a more positive member of the society, mm-hmm. and uh, especially when I love to have that type of. Um, atmosphere where I have more interaction with people like you to learn um, good things which are of course existing in the society but uh, honestly speaking peace is the best topic which need to be discussed everywhere we have to bridge up the gaps between different communities different races different cultures uh, and it can only be achieved by my my maybe a um, number of people can differ from me but i have experience that uh, the concept of the creator must exist if it is not there then the ultimate uh, or absolute justice will not come and ultimate peace will also not come but what if because there's um, definitely different people with uh, different opinion so how w- does it feel for you, for example, some people do not believe in the Creator? And how would you like to, to uh, get them along your idea of, of peace? How would you do that? You know, actually, is everything demands an experience. When you experience something, then you can talk in a, in a more better position. You'll be in a better position to talk on that topic. But mostly people don't like to discuss the concept of the creator mostly don't like Why? and don't Why? But, 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 but because as far as you know it needs some some type some type of exercise some time for the creator also that we don't have you know this this relate purely spiritually you have to develop that type of habit in yourself you have to give some time if you are giving your hair, you have decided to come to a hair. You organize this beautiful event. You, you have given time to. Same the creator also want. Then the, you can understand the concept of the creator. But it's also possible to, to live in peace without the creator. You know, we have tried, of course. But we have not achieved the absolute peace. You can just look around. Originally we have, I mean, recent history. We have League of Nations. They tried their possible best to achieve peace. Then there were wars. Then new concept of United Nations was being um, emerged. And uh, now what you uh, look at, what type of uh, things prevailing in the society? Can I put a, a, sure. a different perspective on things? Very interesting to hear your perspective about um, a, a belief in a creator helping peace in the society, helping peace between nations. But I would put a different perspective, which is that certain um, aspects of this society um, relating to equal rights, um, employment rights, women's rights, all these things come from a secular tradition, you know? Not from a religious tradition, a tradition where it, the the state and religion are separate. I think you know, this is your education. You know, when you been educated, it was been educated in that manner. But honestly speaking, it is the teaching of the religion, equality. Equality was been emerged very first from the spiritually uh, taught uh, wise people. You know, they said that there must be equal rights, there must not be any type of discrimination, there must not be any type of hatred. If you just have, that's what I'm asking and telling you, people don't, 
No, no. I, I, as I tell you, one more important thing is. Not that I'm against spirituality. No, 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 no. I, what happened is one. Religions are created by people, not by God. No, 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 no. Actually, what happened is, if you just see the early history of the true spiritual leaders, you will find it out that they demonstrate the peaceful teaching in their own lives first. But later on, let, what happened, the, the, the people start using the name of religion for their own vested interest. It is not the fault of the religion. It is the... Religion is created by people. No, no, it was not, not at all. If you just, you, no, you, 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 the renowned religions, if you just study about the renowned religions like Christianity, the Buddhism, the Islam and Judaism, all these, these were, there, there was originally one prophet came, he said, I'm from God. And God taught me like this, to spread this beautiful, what do God demands? The gods say, worship me because I have created you. And the second, secondly, God says, be good with other fellow human beings. This is, the, this is everywhere, you will find it out in all the holy scriptures. Later on, it is the selfishness, I mean, I am not use this hard word over here, <clears throat> but in order to develop the societies, people make some rules and regulations they, for their own selves, how to live. You know, they said, all right, you do, don't disturb me, otherwise, if you'll disturb me, I'll also disturb you. But this is not universally, if you just look at the history of, uh, um, I mean, civilization, it was been purely introduced by religion. And religion is the teaching which was been revealed. No, no, interpretation was been made later by um, and the people who start misusing it. And they have misused it till today. We saw all around us what's going on over here. In the name of religion, people have been killed. Can, can I, I was going to say, can I come in there? Because just yeah. an hour ago, amazingly, walking down the Strand, and uh, two gentlemen wanted to take a photograph of each other near the planet, you know, the planet on, the, on the front there. And I said, would you like a photograph of you both together? Oh, yes, please. So I took a photograph of them both together, and he shook my hand. And then he said, what country do I come from? He asked that to me. He asked me what country I thought he came from. Oh, that's a challenging thing to say. You're a human being, so it didn't really matter what country he came from. Uh, and then I said, well, I don't know. I'm guessing wildly the, an Asian con uh, the Asian continent, um, possibly Bangladesh. No, I'm from Pakistan. So I said, well, that doesn't make any difference to me. Oh, well, people are nervous if you're from Pakistan. So why? Um, what you're coming across with is an intense belief in your faith, which suddenly, for the Western world, has almost become threatening. So your, th your philosophy is wonderful, and I would go along with it. And it was the same with these two gentlemen. And they were very warm and appreciative, and it was smashing. But there's, there's an image. And the reverse of this image was when I was 20 years ago walking along a headland in Malta, uh, out the blue, and a gentleman came across. He was expecting to meet somebody. And he said, oh, you must be from England. I said, why am I from England? He said, because you're wandering freely, happily. You don't care about trespass or fear anybody. Where are you from? I said, Liverpool. Oh, well, that explains everything, he said. This is, <laughs> this is, this is, but this is a concept that uh, people like Tom and myself, sort of anybody from Liverpool, have a sort of very genuine openness. We, I, genu I think we believe that 99.9% .9 of people are like us, and we get on well. And only when it's sort of... Uh, diverted, channeled into um, fear and consequences. But if you live for the moment, and this gentleman here was saying before, the future, we've got to plow on. I think our, if I, if I may draw us in, our generation, uh, war babies and pre-war babies, we have a duty now in our old age to put things right. We've allowed all the nonsense, the financial nonsense, everything else that's going on at the moment, that's 
got the world sort of worried and we've allowed it to happen. We, sh we really need time to sort it out. Mm -hmm. It's not out of guilt, we need to do something for our grandchildren to make it a better world. Whether religion's part of that, I don't know, but certainly human understanding, a, sh a warmth, a shared warmth, a universal warmth, and I do believe in the human spirit. What, whether that's a religious spirit as well, in your, your, your acceptance of it, in my sense, there is a human spirit. There is warmth between people that is, can be almost instant. And you know who to fear by an expression on the face, don't you? You know, a baby smiles, or you smile at a baby, it will smile back instantly. You frown and it, it'll frown and cry. Do, do you um, sometimes fear people now? I don't fear anybody. Not anymore or? No, no, I never have done. Well, that's because I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Is it safe for your tongue? Do you fear people sometimes? Sorry. Yeah? No, no. It's come back. <coughs> it's a measurement. Which you fear man-to-man at least. It was absolutely tremendous. Well, as you said, more people have died fighting for God. A lot of people have died How with God on their Stalin? side. How about under Stalin? It's not all... So How about under Stalin and under communist regimes, which were purely secular? I think it's... Um, misleading to I think what you say is right but it's also misleading to that's a misleading argument to me that under well, secular well, I don't that because, because he thought he was right he thought he was God and he was doing it for the state but yeah, I, think, I think um, what, what Rosie is, what I'm, I'm trying also to understand is, is that it's it's not because people are dying be, uh, because this God it's because people are doing this uh, me personally, I, I don't believe in God, but I don't blame God for all the wars. I, I blame people doing this, this thing. I don't blame uh, the Muslim God or the Christian God or etc. So for me, it's not because I can't blame the religion as, as a, a kind of a cause for war and killing. Because I think that's what you're trying. Stalin also did, and people who don't believe also do. So it's not the belief that's the cause of war I think that's and important. Mm. I apologize, but no, 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 no. First, people, a lot of people have died with thinking God was on their side. Their God. Yeah, yeah sure. Too. Sorry, no. I apologize if I didn't explain myself. No, no, more, that's true. Far more people, and, and that is the concern to me. And it's concerned us for years and in the future, and we need to sort it out. Mm -hmm. You know, as we went to form our commonwealth and we made people in different countries worship our gods wrongly we changed their religions to our religion and we did it by the sword lots of lots of countries went to we put people down if they didn't worship our gods then other people are now doing it and okay the media has got a hold of it and if you read the media what it does to religions you know, it's tremendously bad news to people and is alienating people against religions which are normally peaceful and you're far more, far more qualified to speak on that than I am. You know, uh, this is a beautiful discussion being coming out, you know, from different opinions and that is the beauty of life. I do appreciate because my upbringing and of course I'm a practicing Muslim, I know and honestly speaking I've read and I have still that's why I'm sharing all these things with you what I have learned what I have practiced is my Islamic teachings teaches me tolerance height of tolerance height of patience it is it is that it is in my teaching and it is in my fundamental faith that there is no compulsion in religion it is his personal matter I can discuss with you I can share my knowledge with you but those who are doing, this is unfortunately happened and that is still happening, we can see around and as a practicing Muslim, I know very well, these are the predictions which are coming true. When I, whenever you see the early history of Islam, you'll find it out that Islam never ever done anything, I mean killing people like this, you know. If some war were being imposed, been carrying out, it was a self-defense war. And when the things were being settled, 
everybody was being forgiven despite of that uh, revenge concept early in the Islamic history. Muhammad peace be upon him, I know his true history, people don't, maybe many people have not yet studied it. If you find it out, one Christian author wrote a book, uh, The Hundred, and, it, and he just uh, took out all the best people of the civilized, uh, known best people, in which Einstein was also there, maybe Churchill is also there, and Jesus is also there, every prophet was also there, the right. but he put Muhammad on the top. He said the, the height of forgiveness was found in his own life and tolerance was also there. But later on, it was also predicted in, in our teachings. In, I know in the Islamic teaching that Islam will be divided into 73 sects. 73 sects it will be divided. And 72 will be wrong. One will be right. Islam, it, 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 is, it was being told earlier in, in his lifetime. And those uh, have nothing to do with Islam. They will just try their own, uh, they will uh, work on and they will strive for their own vested interest. They will not bother about God and they will not bother about their true teachings of Islam. They will, they will try to, um, I mean, suppress the other peoples where they, they have that opportunity. And they will try to impose their own Islam on them. And that is not uh, at all good. And that's happened. That's happened. But I, my, I am from one of the sect that is Ahmadi Muslim. And we Ahmadi Muslim have a beautiful motto, love for all and hatred for none. This is Islamic sect. And we have, we have and, and you will be, uh, I mean, maybe later I'll just get a chance of just letting you know more, more, know more about our faith is. We have done a lot of charitable work without any discrimination especially in the poor East uh, African countries. We have opened hospitals, maternity homes, schools, and uh, you will be amazed to know this, that every earning member of our Ahmadiyya Muslim community used to give with willingness, with his I mean, uh, uh, consent, one sixth of his earning for charitable purposes. And we have done, when you just log, go on the internet, when you just open our website, Ahmed the Muslim, what they have done, even in this country also, we are very much established over here, and we were very much liked by you people, you know, because we are, we are striving hard to develop the true concept of peace. And peace can only become when we have a respect for everybody, irrespective of his faith, concept if you don't have a belief in God all right I, 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 I still love you because you from my point of view you think you also the creation like me of the Creator how can I have a, a, a hatred develop in my heart that you if you do you don't believe in God it's your personal matter and this is how you've been guided or how you've been uh, um, uh, got education how you've been brought up in different society you know where you have that um, understanding that there is no God. Can, can I ask Tom, um, for you, hospitality in, in, like in Liverpool, um, what does that mean for you? Um, being here, you've been Liverpoolian, I always have to put that. I've become a Liverpoolian. Since I've, when? Since uh, 1998. How, how, um, how, when did you know for yourself that you've become a Liverpoolian? Well, actually, um, that's wrong what I just said, because I don't think... <laughs> in the sense that I live here, I'm a Liber Liverpudlian. I'll never be... I don't think I'll be a Scouser, which is kind of... Um, <clears throat> we take on um, adopted Scousers. We call them adopted Scousers when we've been here after a few yeah. years. Oh, you're an adopted I don't really want to be adopted. <laughs> <laughs> um, you asked what... I asked uh, <laughs> Liverpool hospitality. Means yeah, I, I started with me. the hospitality, but then you said I became a, a Liverpool. When do you know for yourself now I'm part of the, this and I'm no longer? For, I don't know where you come from. But well, see, I like to sort of um, not get tied down too much. You see, um, mm -hmm. I've lived in a few cities, and um, I sort of when when I when I go somewhere new that, that interests me, I kind of develop a romance with that place. 
you know, and, and, and get to know it. And um, I don't want to know it too well, you know. Mm. I've been in Liverpool a long time now, and, and what intrigues me about a place is um, um, finding out new things. And I've been in Liverpool so long that everything that I'm involved in here, I've kind of found, I've kind of, I've sort of done it really. Um, Can I just make one point? I do apologise for going. No, no, no. no, 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 no. When Saladin uh, won in, in the uh, against the Crusaders, he allowed them to um, to worship their gods, no matter what they were. When the Moors ruled Spain, they allowed anybody to worship their god. It was only when the Catholic Church took over Spain that they were put to death if he didn't worship Catholic. And I'm not anti-Catholic, by the way. <laughs> right. um, but you'd never find that fact in the Daily Mail. <laughs> and that is the problem we've got. Because the perception we've got... Oh my God, no, the perception of other people's religions you won't find in this. So people don't know about it. And only know one side. Thank you. You should be proud to be a true scout, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> Can I ask just, for, just, you know, um, I mean, you have Catholics uh, in, in Liverpool, you have uh, the Anglican Church. Um, Buddhist. I'm a Buddhist. What's Buddhist? Um, yeah. Buddhist is, oh God, um, um, oh God, uh, I am a Buddhist. Uh, never, oh God, I, I don't know what a Buddhist is, but I practice Buddhism. Nam yo ho ren ge kyo, nam yo ho ren ge kyo, nam yo ho ren ge kyo. Chant that and you be in, oh God, I practice now for 20 odd years. Um, I don't uh, go around the city uh, in Hart District. I am in Hart District. I don't love Robert. Um, I adore Buddhism. Um, okay. okay. I like the idea of what you're saying now. Um, so you practice Buddhism, you don't know what Buddhism is, no, but I, that's good, that's no, good. But it I, reminds me a bit of what you yes. said, it's an experience. Experience. Yes. You know, but, uh, just to, you know, we mostly have a brought up in a very um, civilized societies, you know, more inventions. And uh, because of that inventions, we stop uh, um, practicing religion because we don't have time and things like that, you know. And uh, it is a... We secondary matter. We have put religion as a second thing, you know, and not because this is all because of the circumstances also, environmentally, unfortunately, because people have um, experienced number of wars, and 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 especially those people who pose themselves to the more religious, their character is not according to their, I mean, thoughts. They they don't practice what they say, and and mostly about uh, uh, there is a saying that. Uh, do what I say but don't do what I do like you know the, the people of religious people they they say do what I say but don't do what I do their their character is so yeah. um, hypocrisy you find it out sometime but you know honestly I'll tell you that uh, it is very important that we must have that type of uh, interfaith type of debates where we can have more interaction with each other until or unless we will not, not learn from each other, we will keep on having that uh, uh, staunch view always in our mind and mostly and because of media also. You know, when you just look around, you just watch TV, something going on in the name of religion and things like that, then you d they develop that this is indeed that religion is a teaching of. What happened, unfortunately, is that now you see that uh, recently there was a film being made in America. And I mean, how, you know, you said that as in a secularist countries, there is more peace. 
the film was being made. And, uh, I mean, uh, I'm saying that progressive developments in, um, for instance, this country uh, have, have been have been as a result of, of secular thought. Secular you know, thought separating the, the church from the state, mm -hmm. and um, secular traditions in in uh, human rights and um, workers' rights. They're all from a secular leftist tradition and a liberal, liberalist and a humanist tradition. Not from, from a religious values. And that doesn't mean they're, they're not compatible. They are compatible. And they also do come from, um, from Greek philosophy and from, from Christianity as well. That feeds into them, into the law and, and all of that kind of thing. But it's not, it doesn't come from a religious text. But why is it important for you to, that it's not coming from a religious? Do you feel that? I just think that um, you can't prioritize like the, the, where good comes from as, as saying, you know, it has to come from a, a religious place. I don't think, I think that's um, unfair to people that, that don't have that religious dimension. Um, and you know, I think it's I think it's a good thing that laws and, and things like that come from somewhere outside of religion because religion can be so easily twisted, you know. You know, so, you, you, your point of view is very valid. And uh, what I want to just share with you is that you know what happened is that uh, on one side we are willing and conscious to have peace in the societies. And that is the dilemma which being faced on one side we say, but we don't work on it. It needs some practical efforts, you know. We need to do something. You know, any act which give a sort of, I mean, uh, damaging the pioneer of any of, the elder of any of community, take it as a religious community or any other sect or something like that, you know. And if it is going on and no one is saying, what's, why you are creating problems? Definitely, if you start hating the prophet of somebody in your own way, then how can a universal peace will come? And if there will be no universal peace, one way or the other, the situation will remain like this, you know what is happening now. Here I just want to point out, out point it out is, as I've just told you, that as a Ahmadi Muslim, we have a motto, love for all, hate it for none. That type of things must be developed in everyone's thought as well as in it practically also. This motto is not to be remain as a motto. It need to be s spread all over the world. So, it, I mean, just again, I'm just giving you a, a very recent issue of this filmmaking, you know. This need to be condemned everywhere. The concept of respect must be there. If I'm respecting my father, and you have some other reservations against my father or something like that, you're my elders, it doesn't mean that you in front of me and you just start hating me, hating my father in more open manner. You can discuss, you can have the reservations, but it not be spread in such a manner that will create hatred in the atmosphere. Have you, have you seen um, the film or have you... Um, the, 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 the disrespectful film to, yeah. to, to Mohammed? Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't, but I think it's a really difficult issue because in, um, um, I guess, a Western tradition of... Um, um, say like in Western tradition that some people are nihilist they don't believe in anything and they also believe that you you should have the right to attack figures of authority and you should have the right to question any belief you know that's that's a, a big thing in um, you know in the history of thought is that you you know you can you can analyze critique and um, you know, if you want to um, sort of like prove wrong any 
any belief, you know, like that's what philosophers do when they study philosophy. They, they study logic and they study, um, you know, argument and debate. And, and that's a part of what goes on in, in universities, you know, and satirists um, that criticize governments that believe they've got a, reason, uh, a right to criticize anything, you know. And there's a debate going on really about how much, because we've, like in France in the, in the, in the 17th, 18th century, they were, they were making cartoons about the royals, um, you know, really obscenely offensive cartoons against the royal family um, because the, the, the royal family were living in, in luxury while the masses were starving. And so being irreverent and, and being, you know, there's no kind of, if we want to look at anything and, and say anything about it, that's a freedom you know and if there's if there's some things that are untouchable and you can't criticize them and you can't go against them then that's like um i don't know people have fought for that but at the same time we have this thing where you can create you can create mayhem if if you if you don't bear in mind that they don't have that tradition in some societies they have like you know more you can't cross those boundary boundaries in every society, but to, some to people think it's very important to have that yeah. that right for debate and you know say what you want and you know I don't want to get in trouble for saying what I think. You know I should be allowed to think what I think. Can I, can I go quickly? Uh, don't take offence because no, 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 let me finish no, no. my sentence when I fin when I say it. But I was a teacher, uh, remedial teacher, a bit comprehensive, uh, and of course. We had several nationalities come in. Unfortunately, a lot of them were put in the remedial class because they didn't have enough English, not because of their intelligence or their learning. And one lesson had been about earthquakes. And the, there was a mention of the San Andreas Fault. And a lad put his hand up, sir, it was not San Andreas' <laughs> fault, it was all the will of Allah. And there was a sort of... <laughs> T titter and smile and all the rest of it. So I said, well, hands up those people who are Christian. So most of them put their hands up. I said, well, this young man knows more about his religion than any of you do. He understands his religion and actually believes in it. Whether he really uh, later on went to truly understand is another matter. But it, it came from um, a sort of training rather than thought, rather than belief, at that age of 13. And I think there's a danger, in, wasn't it, the, the Jesuits used to say, give me a child before they're seven and nail him for life sort of thing. I, I think there is a danger sometimes. But of course, you're in Liverpool, and <coughs> its wealth was found at the end of the 18th century from slavery, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, and we've we beat ourselves up over this. Why? Well, there's no reason to, because we bought the forts around African coast off the Swedes. So they've been doing it way before us. The Boers have been, uh, the Dutch have been uh, sending slaves down to South, America, South Africa. The Vikings have been doing it way, 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 way before then. And the Romans have been doing it as well. So. You know, we do beat ourselves up, but the Church of England jumped on the bandwagon, including Gladstone and others who we think were wonderful politicians. It's a very, very, very confusing thing, and there's also been an element of greed in this. And you talk about warmth and everything else, but greed, greed, greed is where we're in a mess now, I think. Not just individual greed, but uh, national greed. Uh, I am not happy with that at all. Okay. That's I understand that. Uh, right, and how difficult it is for the film to be made. But the protests have given it more oxygen than it would ever have had beforehand if the protests weren't there. And you've got some right wing extremists who's made this film and have now, you know, famous because of the protestations. 
there must be just yeah. short and then yeah, short, yeah. To, uh, the second. most important thing which i want to just maybe sending time like this you know the criticism must be positive there must be, can be criticism but criticism not for the sake of, sake of criti criticism this must be some productive positive results must come out you know simultaneously different things are happening one is the privacy was been disturbed of the royal family recently again you can see this is against against the ethical values i mean there must be limits in order to keep the people understand them that everybody has his own right and obligations you know and that need to be fulfilled if i i'm also talking on behalf of i mean I, i'm not on behalf of but i'm also talking i'm that issue of uh, i mean uh, the royal family that was went to france and then the, some topless photos been taken and like this you know and that was without permission and it was been a sort of um, secretly it was been captured and then it was been published like this you know this is all bad that create lot of problems in the society and then Do you agree with that but, uh, the, sorry to but uh, with with the idea that you need some limits on this for example taking pictures of Kate is definitely not done is that this is a limit this is a value you do not cross um on balance probably probably not i i think there should be more limits on the the power of um, media corporations rather than um and I would like to see more regulation in of capitalism really which this is a function of you know 